Is Intel making a comeback with these Core Ultra CPUs? This one's got a Core Ultra 5 125H. You're looking at the B-Link SEI14. I've always liked the products that B-Link makes as far as like their design and how well they're put together. And this one's no exception. It's extremely sleek, but under the hood, there's some cool cooling going on. We'll talk about that in just a second. First off, I'm gonna go through the specs and just tell you what it is. And I want you to stick around for the benchmarks because I was surprised at how fast the Intel Core Ultras are getting. This is a Core Ultra 5, so it doesn't have as many of the cores as the Core Ultra 7, but for a lot of tasks, it's very similar. You can get something like that, save a little bit of money, and depending on what you need. I use OEM keys for a few different reasons. This is the price you're gonna pay for Windows 11 Pro if you get a retail key. Let's check those prices on whokeys.com. $30, you know, we can do better. Put in TS25, click apply. There we go, 2322. Let's say you wanna get a copy of Windows 10 Pro. Let's click on buy it now. Coupon code TS25, hit apply, and watch that price come down. There we go. The other thing is OEM keys are generally locked to your hardware. So if you move it from one motherboard to another, you may need to get another key, but you'll have to get many, many, many keys to equal the price of of one retail key. If you need Office, you're also gonna be able to get those same deals, 25% off on Office 2019 and 2016. These are offline versions of Office without monthly fees. Let's go ahead and check out with our copy of Windows 11 Pro. All right, I just put in my card info. There we go. Click on View Keys and Codes. Once you get to the User Center, click on Get the Key. You'll see your key right here in the middle. Go ahead and highlight that, copy that, hit Start, type Activate, click on Activation Settings, paste it in there, click on Next, and you will be activated. Also, everything over here is on sale and TS25 is gonna work. So head over to whokeys.com. Thanks to them for sponsoring. And now on to our regularly scheduled program. You can get this configured in many different ways. I got it with 32 gigabytes of DDR5 and a one terabyte NVMe SSD M.2 extra things. Yes, all these words. I'll test those to see how fast they are when we're doing our benchmarks. That Core Ultra 5 125H has 14 cores, 18 threads. When we look at hardware info, I'll talk about how it breaks down uh, when it comes to like the performance cores and the efficiency cores. It's got an Intel Arc graphics card, which is uh, on these mobile parts or these small parts. It's basically the same as the Iris, but once they give it a little bit of RAM and make it a little fancier, they call it an Arc. So it's got seven cores and it runs at 2.2 gigahertz. And I think it's got two gigabytes of memory under the hood. And then it'll also share the system memory. So it's important that that is fast. And we have 32 gigabytes of DDR5 here at 5,600 megahertz. We've got two sticks of that. So it's running in dual channel. So we have two M.2 slots under the hood and they are both PCI Express 4 by four. And you can put a maximum four terabytes in each one. So we have one terabyte in one of those drives. You can populate the other one with whatever you want. We have Thunderbolt 4 because this is Intel. So you get to Thunderbolt, but it, you get Thunderbolt, but it's also USB 4. Now they're calling this design dust proof, which is interesting. They've got it really sealed around the front. And we have a fancy cooling system that they call the MSC 2.0 cooling system. Uh, and it kind of spins the air through the case and then exhausts it out the, out the back. So it comes in on one side and then just creates a tunnel and goes out the back. And that's what you want. You want the dissipation. We'll do the test to see how warm this gets. I mean, you kind of have to figure out something because these Core Ultra, I've noticed, do get really warm and that's not the fault of a lot of the, the manufacturers who are making these mini PCs. I've noticed that, you know, no matter what brand I test, the Core Ultras are always warm. All right, let's take a look at the ports. On the front, we have our power button, and right beside that, there's a tiny little dot right there, and that's a clear CMOS button that you can depress with like a pin or something. Then we have 3.5 millimeter audio jack for headphone microphone combo and all that. Beside that, we have USB-C, that's 10 gigabits per second. And then we also have a USB 3.2, and that one also is 10 gigabits per second. Let's flip it around to the back. We have a USB 3.2 on the top there. And then we have USB 2 below that, which is great. I like plugging up my peripherals to that, it's just fine. And we have 2.5 gigabit LAN. Then we have DisplayPort 1.4, and that supports 4K at 144 hertz. We have HDMI that supports 4K at 60 hertz. Below that, we have another USB 2.0, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack on the back as well. Thank you so much for that. Then we also have our Thunderbolt 4 on the back right there, 40 gigabits per second. It'll support your 4K monitors, support 8K monitors. Um, it'll also support, you know, like portable M.2 and things that you need a lot of a lot of speed for, and it'll let you daisy chain stuff. So if you wanna hook up a couple of more monitors, by all means, daisy chain them with that Thunderbolt 4 on the back. Taking a look under the hood here. Well, in order to get under the hood, we have to remove some feet on the bottom. And I wanna say something to B-Link. I've decided not to take this thing apart and I hate doing that is like having a rough time getting things apart but here's the deal on, on the back there are four little screws and they are covered with some like rubber I don't know stoppers or something so they put those in there so it gives it a sleek look I can't think of any other 
function other than like keeps the dust out or something. All of them came out pretty easily with just a pair of tweezers or a screwdriver just popping them out. But one of them was glued in there so, so much that it would not come out. I kept trying and trying and finally it started like to dig out in pieces. So the little thing that you're using to put, you know, the screws, you know, like cover up the screws on the back. Uh, yeah, that was annoying to get out. So I tried to unscrew it a little bit, even though there's still some residue or some pieces of that rubber left in there and the screw did not want to move and it started to strip. And I was like, you know what? This is not worth my stress. I know there's an extra M.2 slot on the inside. I know it's got some fancy copper heat pipes and everything. So it's got a lot of thermal mass on the inside. 4.8 millimeters of thickness, I'm told, as far as the, the plates and everything that they put in there. And there's also uh, that they also employ vapor chamber cooling around the CPU because, I mean, really the CPU needs as much help as it can get when it comes to cooling. But they have all this cool stuff in there and you can see that there's a fan there and they have some dust proofing uh, around the fan and everything as well. But I'm not going to tear that screw out for this video. As far as our wireless connectivity goes, we got Wi-Fi 6 and then we also have Bluetooth 5.2. All right, let's go ahead and run some tests, try some games and just see what happens when we put this thing through its paces. Every now and then I request a game and, you know, it's because I want to play it. I, this looked a lot like F-Zero, so I was like, yes, I really want to try out Red Out. This is Red Out Enhanced Edition, so it's got better visuals and everything, but it still has the older versions in there if you wanted to play those. Anyway, I wanted to try this on the mini PC and, yeah, it plays great. I'm playing this with most things set to high or medium and I think it looks fine. You can see on the screen right here how it looks and it performs great. I just need to figure out how to turn better. But yeah, if you're looking for something that's kind of like, I don't know, F-Zero, Pod Racer, or one of those super high speed racing games that's, um, you know, not really realistic, but a ton of fun, got to avoid the size, you'll blow up just like F-Zero, then yeah, I think this is quite a bit of fun. I just need to figure out how to corner and turn and stuff since this is the first time I've played it. I'm not going to have time to play it this month, I don't think, but next month I'm going to come back because this does look like my kind of game. So if you want to check it out, I'll put a link down in the description. Thanks to them for sending over this key. And yeah, it works really good on these mini PCs. Now let's do some benchmarks. All right, let's try superposition. I always do 1080p medium. And this test will stress the CPU and the GPU at the same time because it's got a lot of physics. So let's go ahead and run this benchmark. Unigen, by the way, they made a, a new version of their game engine if you're interested. All right, so our average is looking really good. 39.86, much better than I expected. But, uh, you know, Intel's kind of trying to step up their game to keep up with AMD. Overall score, 53.29. And you can see the minimum was still above 30. Valley benchmark, 72.6 FPS. I did not expect that. Score, 30, 39. How does it stack up to the AMD 7840HS? Let's see. All right, so this is the performance of the Intel. This is the performance that we got from the AMD 8945HS with a Radeon 780M. Just a little bit faster, so the Intels are finally here to game. Let's see how it does in real games, like actual gaming. Let's test out Cyberpunk. I like to start it on, we'll start it on high here and see how we do. I started speaking almost Scottish there. I always turn off motion blur because it's garbage. So yeah, but this first one here, hi, how you doing? Yes. Well, I think part of me already knew that it wasn't going to be running at high, but you know, we tried 29.71 with a minimum of 25.73. Let's just see what we can do here with medium. Okay, medium, we're above 30. So we can argue about whether or not this is playable because it's an RPG, but it's also a first person game. So argue all you like, but average of 36.82 sounds not bad. Let's try it on low because I still think low looks very good on this not, not ray tracing overdrive. There we go, low, and that should automatically turn off motion blur. Low looks really good in this game. Still has great lighting, some, still has some effects. So yeah, I mean, look when we're going through this bar here in the beginning. This is low. So yeah, I'm just going to let this play for just one more second here while I ramble and waste a bit of time. But I, I want you to see that, you know, low looks really good. So if you want to play this on this system or a similar system or an inexpensive system or whatever you've got and you want to play it on low, well, by all means, don't let that stop you because it looks awesome still. All right, so low is slightly better. Maybe uh, feel a little bit smoother. Minimum... <clears throat> Minimum is 34.99, the average is 41.30. I'm just curious, let's check out what the 780M is like. So in the canned benchmarks, yeah, it's catching up. But, I mean, take a look at this. This is the AMD 780M graphics. It just can't quite compete with the 780M. So this is from another one of the reviews I did. It's getting there, but, you know, 
can't quite beat the 780M. All right, let's just see how Baldur's Gate runs. Uh, and we're gonna run this on, I think it wants low quality. Let's try low and uh, FSR. I mean, I'll leave that off. No XESS options, so resume. Hey, now we're talking, All right, let's try medium. This works. We're in the 30s now that the textures, they'll show up. They'll pop in. All right, there we go. I mean, it looks okay. All right, so medium hovers around 30, moving around the world and stuff. Gale's dead. <laughs> You're gonna have to turn off a few things. I wouldn't play this, I don't think. I mean, it's totally doable. You can play it, but I don't know if I would on this system or not. Yeah, go have a seat. Yeah, just stay there. So, yeah, kind of playable. We'll leave it with that. Tears of the King. Now let's have a look at some of these benchmarks. This is Passmark. And our overall rating, we're in the 69th percentile, which is exactly what you all wanted, I know. 63, 33.5. And there's all of our individual scores. You can check that out if you want to. So, yep, there's our Passmark score. There's our disc mark. Read 5057. And the right 1581. IOPS 84. Memory mark. Just go through each one of these and let you see them. 2D was pretty good. CPU mark. All them efficiency cores and a few of those fancy cores. There we go. All right, so that's pass mark. Let's see what Geek. Let's see what Geekbench has to say. Our single core score is 2162. Multi core 10952. I'll scroll down so you can see all the individual tests. There's the information. 5586 mega transfers. Well, well. All right, scrolling all the way down to the bottom. There, that's everything. Let's look at OpenCL over here. 33457. These are getting faster. Like the Intel integrated ARC CPUs or GPUs getting faster. There's all the details there. Now let's take a look at Cinebench. Starting off with our single core score. Now the single core benefits from having some of those beefy performance cores and the efficiency cores are just going to hang out in the background. That's why we got 14 with 18 threads. We got a few of those efficiency cores and those are fast as you can see. Now just you know, make sure that you note that everything else on the list here, that's an i7, uh, you know, 1165. We're on like the 13th gen or whatever. So we're, these are much older, but it is quite a bit faster than like a 7700K. God, that's fancy. And then down here, you can see the thread rippers and stuff. Let's get that multi-core score. And that's when those efficiency cores start to slow things down just a little bit in comparison. So you get really good performance with the single core. So applications that need, you know, just one or two cores going to be awesome. And then with the multi-core stuff, like, you know, rendering, doing stuff like this, video editor, and stuff not going to be as fast as the craziest stuff on the market but you can certainly edit 4k video on this without any problems all right let's do a benchmark with the uh, m.2 on the inside see how fast it is we've also got the smart information over here so we can monitor the temperatures in real time but this is just a bigger representation so that we can see it all right going to run all the tests here on crystal disk mark see how we do this one i have to manually refresh but this one is live so 46 degrees almost immediately I, I i don't really worry about them until they start getting up into the 80s and it's like whoa what's going on but yeah they can usually run like that for a while it's really nice to see that you know even right here in the middle of the test the temperatures came down when we're not going so crazy fast even though it's just still doing stuff it's not accumulating more and more heat it should get the hottest right here these two this is very good like i figured the temperatures would be hotter than this but yeah mid 40s 50s even like the mid 50s would be totally fine right here like we're getting right now yeah get up closer to 60 or i'm gonna feel like it's weird all right 55 that's the hottest it's been dropped right back down in between tests all right so there we go uh maxed out at 56 degrees didn't get loud at all couldn't even hear any difference over the regular so cooling wasn't needed it stayed nice and cool 46 14.27 was the max read and 2069.13 was the max write so there you go. And we can take a look at the IOPS. I'll just let you look at this yourself on the read and write 155, 117-ish. All right, since we have that open, let's go ahead and run ADA 64. I'm going to set this on fire for about 15 minutes and just see how warm it gets and then we'll test out the sound. Yeah, yeah, click on the fire. And we can watch the temperatures right over here. See in 15. It's been over 15 minutes. It's 18 minutes and something. And it looks like we maxed out at, well, it says 89, but it's usually a spike with these Intels. It'll spike up. Stayed in the 70s a lot. We're in the mid-70s. 5% um, right there. Max throwing a little bit of overheating detected. So I've been getting overheating with the Ultra 7 and the Ultra 5, so these must just run warm. Uh, there's also the possibility that um, we just need an update of ADA, because sometimes the newer Intel CPUs need updates so that they'll run uh, correctly. But yeah, 83. So yeah, it's warm. 
Intel Core Ultras are warm. They're fast. They work really well. But when you stress them out at 100%, which you never do really unless you're you know constantly rendering something all day long. Let's do some noise readings. 43, 44 while we're just chilling. All right, let's put it under the desk. All right, so yeah, you can definitely hear it. It's um not altogether pleasant because it goes up and down. Oh, it's much louder all of a sudden. Well, I didn't get anything higher because uh, it, it, it goes up and down. So like it'll whir up to like 50 decibels or 49 decibels. And it's like, so it's not a pleasant thing to listen to because it's constantly changing. It's, you know, I guess it's tone and it's timbre. It's not euphonious at all. This is not making music with those fans. So I'm going to say this one's slightly loud, not incredibly loud. And when you're just using it and just playing games, it's hard to hear. But while you're doing stress tests, the fans do get loud. But most of the time when I'm just using the system, even while doing the benchmarks, you barely hear them. But right now you do. All right, and now let's have a just full look at everything here with hardware info. Just give you the full system summary. Intel Core Ultra uh, 5 125H. See, there's our TDP. Shows you how our cache stacks up right there as well. L3, we got 18 megabytes of that. MMX, got the multimedia extensions. Remember when people cared about that? Like a lot. So as far as our efficiency cores go, we have eight efficiency cores, plus we have two low power efficiency cores. So that's like really handling the background stuff. You can put this into some pretty low power states. Um, so that gives us a total of 18 threads altogether, but it's not gonna really feel like that if you're you know needing all of that performance. These are the main things that's gonna come into play when it comes to gaming and rendering and stuff. All right, I didn't expect the Core Ultra to be as fast as it is. AMD, time to get your act and, you know, act together and start like making something new. Is it as fast as AMDs that are in the same price category? Yeah, it's about the same, maybe a little bit slower. We're talking like this much slower when it comes to gaming. But for other things, it could be a better option. And that's when you need like a, a bunch of cores sometimes, but not all the time. And you want the efficiency cores just to chill. If you like the, the way the efficiency cores work, or you just like the fact that it gives you higher number of cores or whatever, then, then that's really cool. Depending on what, you know, which AMD you're looking at, because some of them just have like 16 big cores and that's what you got, or threads. It'll have like eight cores and eight threads. But this one, you know, it's got, it's, instead of having lots of threads, it's got a couple hyper-threaded cores, but the rest of them are just actual physical cores, they're efficiency cores, but they're they're cores nonetheless. So where does this really get fun? Well, if you're running like a Proxmox server or something and you run like the updates, I'm not sure if you still need to do that, but when I ride the last time I installed Proxmox, I had to install like just a couple packages so that it would work with Intel's efficiency cores. And after that, all the cores showed up just fine. Actually, all the cores and all the threads show up. So it just says I've got all these cores to play with. And that can be really handy if you're running a virtual environment. Just having all kinds of cores and being able to, you know, over provision if you want to, because it can handle it'll just queue everything up the right way. So I got my my, my server in there and I got all kinds of VMs running, uh, Windows VMs and Linux VMs and, you know, actual desktops, remote desktops and everything. And it's fine. It's running really, really well. So this can handle multiple installations of different things at the same time. Let me know what you think of this B-Link. Don't forget to head over to epicpants.com and get yourself clad in some good things. Yes, don't run around uh, naked. I mean, unless you want to. Okay, listen, wear the wear the shirt. You don't have to wear the pants. That's the de that's the deal we're gonna make right now. Grab grab you one of these, and I'll give you some deals on these. I'll, I'll post them in the comments or whatever. And while I'm editing this, I'm hearing myself say that and going like, oh, I better go make some deals because I don't know when I'm posting this. Maybe next week. Maybe the week after. Stop moving around, camera. I know I know you're up to no good. I'm over here now. I got a new camera. It's fun. Anyway, I'll see you all in the comments.